Hey everyone, thank you so much for taking your own time to check out this live stream today where I'm joined by my co-host Anthony A. Perez, who you guys have seen on the channel quite a few times. But more importantly, I'm joined by three awesome guests. We've got Oscar Wenman-Hyde, Henry Fisk and Henry Wilson. And they're all part of the movie Cycles, which I have reviewed on my channel, which is due to come on Amazon Prime on February 28th. So to start this off, Oscar and both Henrys, how are you guys doing today? Uh, really good, thank you. Yeah, happy to be here, Mike and Anthony. Thank you for having me and us. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. And Henry, how are you guys doing? Really good, yeah. Yeah, really happy to be here. It's a really uh, unique experience, so thank you very much. Awesome. No, well, thank you guys for taking the time out. And um, yeah, me and Anthony both got a screener and we were both approached by Oscar to check out the movie a little bit earlier than the intended release. We both really, really enjoyed the movie. I wanted to get to know you guys a little bit better. So, uh, Oscar, I'm going to just kick this off and I'm going to start with yourself. So this movie cycles, how did you come up with the idea of writing this movie? Uh, so originally it started as like two ideas. Um, on one hand, I knew I wanted to make a film about university that um, dived into the topics of some of my own experiences there and how I feel, felt going to university and being at university. And then on the other hand, I wanted to make a film about two brothers um, that dive deep into that relationship and like my own relationship with my brother in a way. And so it took me ages to realize that they could be one and the same, which um, you know I didn't think about for so long. And then I just sat down one day, I was looking at the ideas and then I just tried just, just off the top of my head to merge them together. And for a long time, Cycles was just called Brothers because I couldn't think of anything to call it. <laughs> and um, I started to develop it. And before I wrote anything, I just tried to figure out who these characters really were. Like I based, um, there's parts of both characters that are somewhat based on me. There's obviously parts that are fictional as well. And so I just tried to create some really well-rounded characters before starting any script. And then at the time, I also had a guy called Cameron Fox join me on help, helping to develop the story and the character yeah. of younger brother to make sure that we dealt with his, um, his identity and his sexuality authentically. Um, so that right. was a big part of the development before I started writing any script. So yeah, that's how it came about. And then after I'd finished the story and developing that of uh, myself and Cameron, I then sat down and wrote the script um, I wrote it in about a week and then had about two months just fine tuning and editing it until we had pretty much what we used. Wow, that's insane. I mean, that, that's incredibly impressive. Again, just the fact that you have a 24 year old, a 22 year old, and I think Henry Fist, they said that you're 19, right? Yeah, 19. Yeah. The, the fact that you guys were able to bring, I think for me, what was most impressive was the maturity in the film, which I think was <laughs> the, the part that was the biggest takeaway for me. Because I was telling Mike before, I'm a huge fan of films that take place in one location, but they can easily become boring, or stale, or, you know, really not, you know, it's kind of feeling nonsensical sometimes. It feels sometimes limited, but you guys use the dialogue to keep it fresh and exciting and engaging throughout. And what I really enjoyed about it is it's not just two brothers discussing something. It's two brothers that almost in a lot of ways feel like they know each other better and more deeply than they actually do. And over the course of this discussion, that's really you know expanded upon and there's a whole new realization so I, I have to commend you guys for the maturity and the approach to such a such a real topic and uh, for the Hen henry's i was curious wh where did you guys kind of lean into for your inspiration for these characters you were playing what did you guys pull from are there other movies or other actors that you maybe look to for your inspiration uh, definitely curious so i guess we can we can start with henry fisk and then go on to wilson um, to be honest, for me, and um, we talked about this when we were doing rehearsals. Um, we had, I remember, we had one session where we talked about sort of personal experiences and stuff, and we all sort of opened up. Um, it was quite early on, I think. I can't remember exactly when it was, but um, I, for me, I didn't really look at any other actors. Obviously, I have a lot of actors that are my heroes, and I watch a lot of films, and I, I have a lot of inspiration. But for this particular project, I sort of looked at my relationship with my own brother, who is my half brother. Um, he's my dad's and my dad was married before he married my mum, and I sort of felt like I could relate in the sense that um you know me and my brother although we are brothers and I, I do just treat him like a normal brother instead of a half brother um you know we've never really been as close as I would like us to be and I sort of I sort of took inspiration from that because I love him to bits and I sometimes 
feel like he doesn't love me as much as I love him. And whether that's just my insecurity um, or whether that's actually the truth, I don't know. But um, I sort of took uh, inspiration from that instead of any uh, particular uh, actors. But yeah, that was that was my inspiration for it. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. No, we definitely spent a lot of time looking at our own sort of relationships. And like Henry, I, I've got an older brother as well. Um, who, you know, naturally through growing up, you have uh, an up and down relationship with. I, I love him to bits and uh, we get along really well. So we have that nice relationship. But I think as well at the time, um, I just moved to England by myself uh, at the time of when Cycles came to me, um, the, the role. But yeah, I, I was living just couch surfing and I'd met some university students uh, in Bristol and I was living with them. Um, and I guess I got sort of like an omniscient sort of perspective on university life, having not studied myself. Um, I was around all these university kids and living with them and, you know, forming friendships and bonds with them. But, you know, it became incredibly apparent the sort of um, university experience that exists in the UK. Uh, that's very different to Australia, which is where I, where I grew up. Um, and I guess being around all these, and they're, they're all creatives as well, um, pursuing creative careers and degrees and whatnot. So. I think if we all had this strong sense of, you know, just that fear and that existential dread of going out into the world uh, of careers as a creative that I found really, really interesting to get that sort of insight into. And that definitely informed a lot of the, the sort of themes in cycles of that, you know, existential dread, that idea of following one's path and, you know, where are you going to go? What are you going to do with yourself? And just finding that direction and purpose. So that, that definitely played a big part of, in informing and inspiring, yeah, my, my performance. Awesome. Well, I love both you guys' opinions and like how you came around this role and your inspirations that you drew from, because, you know, like most of us that do have like a brother or a sister or any kind of relative, you know, if you think about it really, like how often do we open up to them and have those conversations? It's normally like, hi, how are you? Or how's your day been? So I love that. And um, kind of talking about the inspiration side of things, one thing I need to ask you guys is, I believe that this movie was shot during COVID, like the height, is that right, Uh Yeah, so we shot it in May last year, um, yeah, okay. over, over five days. So we were out of lockdown. It was like that okay. little bit in the middle. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the okay. really good ins and outs of lockdown, but yeah, it was during that. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so during that time, like we rehearsed for like three months before that, though, and a lot of that was outside in the cold. And um, I put an Instagram post the other day. Yeah, we were in our first rehearsal in a park, and I used pegs and string to make like a small <laughs> pan of the room. So you know, desperate times calls for desperate measures, doesn't it? Well, well, yeah. I was going to ask you, Oscar. So I saw that post the other day, and what I was intrigued by is when you guys were practicing in the you know public park and saying your lines. Did at any point did any of you guys get approached or any like kind of funny looks when you're like shouting some dialogue at one another or <laughs> anything like that know, happened in the cool stories? There was this one guy, uh, Henry's, if you remember, that came up to us in Bristol when we we're in Castle Park yeah. <laughs> and was asking a lot about the film. And our producer mm -hmm. Luciano D'Amato was, you know, trying to really sell it to him, just this passerby, telling him where to find it on IMDb and all that. You never know, maybe he's still following us, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the only really interaction I can remember. Um, I mean, we soon made our way inside for rehearsals. Um, we did it in Henry's dining room. And yeah, it was it's just a really amazing experience to have that time to rehearse. Like right. three months, I think it was around that time, maybe a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. But this film, like you guys have said, it was all about the dialogue. Um, we're also all first time feature film makers, you know, other than our producer. So what did we have to rely on really other than the script which we all believed um you know we could bring to life in a really nice and honest way so that was what a lot of the rehearsals were about and as we got further on in rehearsals because our sound guy elliot tottle um it was his first feature and first film of any sort he has no background in film at all um he was just coming to do us a favor and ended up loving it but like we'd have rehearsals where he could come and practice with all the sound gear. So then when we got onto set, um, you know, we'd have it would be much easier and we could free flow, wouldn't have to experiment as much. And also we were very limited on the gear we had. So the rehearsal sessions as well were more about how can we get the most out of what we've got, which is hardly anything. 
and right. looking back, you know, they made all the difference to the final film because it's, it's not perfect. But I think what we managed to achieve with what we got is just down to our testament um, as creatives and how much we cared for this project. Like we were willing to do anything and put in all the hours and all the time. And I can't thank the Henrys here enough and everybody else in the crew for believing in this project to give up all of that time because, you know, we spent like half a year together by the time the film would finish and we finished talking about it. It's a very long time for a zero budget project. Well, yeah, that's crazy. I love to hear about the amount of passion and energy and just kind of like, you know, do it yourself kind of filmmaking that you guys had to do to make this happen. Uh, were there any struggles? You know, you, you only had, I'm sure that that dorm room for such a short period of time, were there any hiccups in the production and definitely like days and times where you were thinking to yourself, Oh man, I don't know if we're going to get this done. Uh, I always thought we were going to get it done um, because when coming back to the rehearsals, when we did it in Henry's dining room, we set up his dining room like the bedroom and the size of the bedroom. So I remember the first rehearsals, Henry Fisk and Wilson, and I kept telling you both, like, get closer together, closer, closer. <laughs> and like every week, just pushing them closer together, even if it was uncomfortable, because I knew that on the day, there's no way we're getting the crew in that room. If we're all spaced out, we're going to have to be like, Rushed together. I mean, like Henry Wilson, I remember that day, and there's a there's a clip in this behind the scenes feature that we've got that will be released after Cycles gets released of um Henry putting his um top over this fan that we've got, and he's just like sweltering with heat. So I reckon Henry can carry on with the difficulties. Yeah. They face. I guess I mean you know props to Oscar's in, impeccable organization that I never <laughs> felt at one at any moment that you know this project couldn't happen. I ne never had any doubts that you know, it wouldn't be made because of how well organized and planned and the, the mentality of, of the whole the whole team. I think when we got uh, into the actual location, it was in the middle of like a heat wave that was just horrible. And 10 people cramped in this tiny little room with a window that opens like a few centimeters. Me wow. in like a big long jacket and a coat and just sweating profusely. Yeah, it, that that I mean, that was probably the only thing that I could put to a, to a to a real challenge or test of character i think we got lucky as well though didn't we really because i worried on the first couple of days in the room because like it's really hot now and henry fisk and wilson are both really sweaty and it's noticeable and i was like if tomorrow it's overcast and the sun's gone and it's cold and they no longer look like that we've got a bit of a continuity problem because we have no one on hair and makeup so we were just working with the natural elements so that did play on my mind the first couple of days. And um, even though I was looking at the forecast, it said there was still going to be sun. I couldn't trust it. Uh, so I'm really grateful in a way, looking back now that we're out of it and out of the trauma of it, that, um, you know, the sun carried on for all five days because otherwise, you know, Henry Fisk and Henry Wilson, yes, they wouldn't have been suffering as much, but they would look very different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, for sure. And um, yeah, you know, hearing about, I was going to actually going to ask you guys about how many people were at the room in one time, but 10 people in that tiny dorm room, well, the university room was crazy. Um, yeah, like we, we'd obviously, on some scenes, we didn't need everyone. Or when we we're facing the window, we could have the door open of the room so we could spread out a little bit more. Um, there was only a few scenes when, you know, it's a really wide shot and you can see like the whole room. It was really cramped. There's some great, there's some great bits in our behind the scenes feature of like Elliot who did sound hid under the desk. You know that scene where they're sat on the bed, and like there's a wide shot at the beginning, like there's nowhere for him to go or anyone to go. And we didn't have wireless mics either because we couldn't afford them. So we just had this boom, and he just like hid under this desk like this, holding the boom out. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> there's loads of cool just in the cupboard as well, and um, people yeah. slept on top of furniture just like like vampires in the top back corner of the room. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So, um, so Henry Fisk, I was going to ask you, so, um, you know, Henry and Oscar were spoken. So what would you say was your kind of, um, you know, biggest challenge being on set? To be honest, it's a boring answer, but the exact same thing, the heat, it was, <laughs> it was. Um, it really was yeah. that bad though, wasn't it guys? It really <laughs> yeah. was awful. It, it, it like, honestly, I, you think, oh, it's just the UK can't be that hot, but it was, it was in that room. Yeah. I tell you what, it was like an oven. It was honestly, it was, it was really, really hot. So that that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, <laughs> I remember the scene in the room. with Henry when um it was really hot and they would take their jackets off after every take because they were just boiling, and then Henry Fisk left his off 
and we just we did a load like a, a fair few shots and no one realized for a while <laughs> and then we're like oh no you haven't got your jacket on yeah. <laughs> you know but that was you know the heat it's not just uncomfortable but like by the end of the day when we had done like eight to ten hours you no know, one could think and like a lot of the days the final hour i mean you guys probably remember this was probably frustrating for you guys because there was so much material but we'd get in the next day and i'd be like i reviewed the footage and the last hour we've got to redo and that happened every day other than the last day because we thought we were on it but we were just so like deranged that last hour <laughs> like I, I mean how fist how was it for you, like remembering those lines in those final hours like when we got to like hour nine hour ten I, I think as the day went on it definitely got harder um <laughs> I think we, we kind of by the end of the day we were all uh delirious we, we just couldn't we couldn't work at all it was just that hot um so yeah <laughs> I, I remember we, we we did have to redo them. The all the, we did have to redo all the end of the day scenes a lot the next day because um, right. we, we, we were just exhausted. We were knackered. The, the heat was that bad. We were just delirious. <laughs> so did you, did you guys use like that? You know the heat pouring in that room at the time. Did you guys use that heat for like when the moments come in the movie when you guys maybe it's start to like shout at one another? Did that kind of draw a bit inspiration as well? Tensions were definitely high as a result of the movie. So it definitely made it like, a little bit easier to channel that into a poor Henry Fisk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah pro probably subconsciously. Subconsciously right. it would probably make me angry. I was like, I'm so hot, I've just got to let out my anger. Um, <laughs> we were always fighting for the fan as well. There was a fan in the other room and we would always, after every take, we'd just run and go to the fan and just cool off, yeah. <laughs> fighting for it all the time. There's this great photo on our Instagram. It's quite a way back from just after we shot of Henry Fisk and Henry Wilson just lying on their backs in the floor in the middle of the hallway, just like absolutely exhausted. Their eyes are closed. Their face looks like it's melting. And um, But it, it's great to look at those photos now for me. And like it only makes me more appreciative to talk about this and look at those old photos of when we're all just like depleted. And now, you know, as we're coming up to release and, you know, people are viewing it and there's lots of positive thoughts about the film, the fact that we went, we all went through that for no money, um, just passion and art and creativity. And, you know, we can look back on it and laugh now, but it, yeah, it really was brutal. We're not exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. I, I have to ask though, now, now that we, you know, we, we've talked about some of the silly stuff, the movie, like I said before, touches on some really serious stuff. And I wanted to ask all of you guys, I guess I'll start with Fisk and then to Wilson and then to Oscar. Um, what are uh, what, what do you guys want people to take away from this film the most? If there's one thing that you're hoping that people take away from this film, from your performance, from your characters, uh, what, what's the main takeaway that you're hoping to see? That's a good question. Um, I think in general, because it covers a whole range of topics. I'd say in general, just, you know, it's good to talk. Um, you know, if you go to university or even if you're not at university and you're just, you know, living a, an everyday life, if you've got things that you want to talk about with your family or your friends, if you've got things going on in your head that uh, are making you, you know, down or anything like that, you, it's just important to talk. And I think, um, you know, as we, as we were filming, uh, and doing the scenes where we were opening up and we had the big monologues and stuff like that. I just thought, you know, even though it is a film, it's, it's really, it's a really important message because I wish at times in my life that I could have had dialogue like younger brother and older brother did, you know, with my brother or with one of my friends. Like I wish that we could have spoken about things that were on my mind. I wish we could have spoken about things that were bothering me. And I feel like that is the most important message to take away from it from my point of view yeah sure yeah no i mean i i definitely I definitely agree and i think like you said henry that there's so so many themes and subjects and topics that that we touch on um in the film and with the with the nature of it being obviously a dialogue driven piece you're you're following just two brothers having a conversation and it you know goes as the title suggests in a cyclical nature of you know falling back into arguments and then sort of reconciliation and then you know, falling apart in the natural way that, you know, a lot of conversations do between two people that have such a long history and, and uh, you know, a strong relationship together. Um, so I think the short answer, I'd love for anyone to take anything away from it. That, that's a win for me. Um, but I guess personally, you know, to, to 
have a more specific answer. Um, it would be, I guess, just accepting that sort of chaotic equilibrium, you know, learning to sort of exist in uh, the, the perpetual state of things, you know, constantly changing, constantly shifting. No one can really articulate how they're, like, you know, Oscar mentioned, the brothers, they, they think they know each other better than they do. And it's this this same sort of thing of keep falling into the arguments. And I guess it is just that that sort of nature that, you know, these things keep happening. There's always something that's going to be coming up. There's always rocks in the road. But like Henry said, communication is the only way that we can get through it. And it's just that learning to accept things. At the end of the day, all that we have, you know, like as an older brother, I'm sure my character, you know, had a lot of negative impacts on your, you know, your younger brother's character and vice versa. But it's just that learning to accept that at the end of the day, it all comes down to just, we're two brothers, we're humans. We don't know what we're doing with our lives. We're both flawed, but all we have at the end of the day is our, our love and our family. So just that at its core, you know, learning to sort of exist in that, that state of chaos and just accepting it, just flowing like water through it and, you know, coming back to square one at the end of the day, we've got each other and that's all we have. That, that's the only thing that makes sense in life. Yeah, how do I follow either like any of that? <laughs> I was going for a moment. I was like, should I just stay quiet and see if they move on? But no. <laughs> um, great job, Fiskars. And I, like, I agree with every everything they've said. And there's always things, you know. In a way, now I don't think I can really comment on younger brother and older brother as well as those two can. And I think that's changed my perspective a lot on what I want people to take away from this film. Because I've not seen these two characters. I don't see these characters as, as internal characters anymore. You know, I see them as just real characters, real people that kind of have nothing to do with me. Even the parts that is based on truth. Um, it's moved on so much now and the timeline the journey keeps flowing. And Fisk and Wilson created the own, their own identity out of the truth and the fiction for these characters. So um, I feel so dis disconnected, but also, you know, connected still in a way. Um, but nicely out of it you know outside the circle and i always wanted this film more than anything to be a conversation starter for young adults um to have all of those conversations and topics like fisk and wilson mentioned but now and as we're getting closer to release and we're self-distributing i kind of feel like i just want people to see this film and one of the big messages of the film is you know follow your passion follow your gut I know it's scary, I know it's tough, but do what makes you happy, um, no matter how hard it might be, just believe in yourself. And I think now, and especially if, because the self-distribution leans into that, you know, because we're taking this all on our shoulders um, from day one, you know, we had no help, no money, nothing from day one until release. And now I, I hope people see that, like, outside of the film as well, they see how it was made and what went into it. And that's why I'm really grateful to do this. Because in the film, on one hand, tells you to follow your dream and your passion. But also, I think as filmmakers, as a team, we've really done that for ourselves. And I hope that shines through in the passion of the film and in the way that we talk about it as well. So I think that's what I want. You know, people, go follow your dreams. It'll, be, it'll work out in the end if you really want it, I think. Yeah, like you guys have all strong messages about what you want everyone to take away from it. And I think that's very motivational because like Anthony and myself, you know, we started YouTube out of a passion you know, similar to your skill for writing, you know, these scripts and, you know, and getting your dreams out there. And, you know, having Henry's on board is awesome because you can clearly tell from your guys' conversation that you guys are passionate about this project and you really put everything into older brother and younger brother to make those parts as they were. And um, what I want to know from the Henry's is was there any times you guys had to improvise or did you guys do much improvisation to add to the script? I think our rehearsal period, um, you know, it was quite, it's quite a gift being able to have, you know, three, four months, whatever we had in the end um, to rehearse, you know, it's, it's a rare, it's a rare case for films. Um, but I think we, we spent a lot of the early days, especially going through the script, just page by page and putting our own interpretation onto it and just sort of saying how, you know, his older brother, does that feel like something I'd say? Does that, you know, we, we worked with Oscar and as, a, as, a, as a crew and as a team to, to shape the, the base script that Oscar and um, Oscar had written. Um, and yeah, turn it into something that felt 
real and authentic for us and for our own delivery. So there wasn't too much improvisation that came about when we actually got to the production because we'd done so much um, work as a group together at the start, making it our own, you know, putting our own voices into the piece. Sure. Sure. And Oscar, I was going to ask you, so is there any kind of like Easter eggs in this movie? Because I know Alex from Airtown Reviews said, you know, we put Henry's together, it's Wilson Fisk, like the, the yeah. Marvel villain. <laughs> But like, <laughs> for example, like there's a scene in this movie where the older brother is placing down some DVDs. Mm -hmm. Were those DVDs like some favorite movies of you guys, or were they just random collections? Or what was that about? That's a really cool question, actually. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't remember how much you can see them in the actual film. I know they're in the trailer, and I know they are in the film, but I can't remember the shot in the film. Um, but yeah, they actually are. So um, our producer Luciano Damato, his debut. <laughs> film boy in the corner which is um due for release this year i think he made like a mock-up dvd to include in the film and um awesome. yeah when he came up with that idea then he produced a few more basically and he did another one of a script i had wrote with him that same year called inscriptus and there was another one uh, called melodrive which is a project of mine which i'm currently thinking about you know and i won't say any more about that but i put that in there as well as another little um easter egg and there's also the books that Younger Brother has. Um, one of them is a book called Chroma that I wrote um, a couple years ago. Ones that Luciano wrote called I'm um, a Curse. And there's a couple other by um, couple other books by creatives that we know as well. We tried to make in the props include stuff of our own creation and other creatives that we know. That's amazing. That's such a cool thing to know that you were able to kind of layer that in there you know what i mean and i didn't even know mike was going to ask that so that's a it's a cool <laughs> little uh, bit of knowledge for myself as well i have to ask I, i'm curious for the two brothers for both henry's and that question for oscar as well we'll start with oscar though oscar what were you looking for when you started writing these characters when you actually started looking for the actors and you knew you had to cast these roles were these henry's already that like the characters in mind did you come across them? Like, how did, how did that process come along? And then for the Henrys, obviously, you guys play brothers, and it's convincing. You believe it while you're watching the movie. Did you guys have any time spent together trying to bond? Did you guys know each other before this production that kind of helped with the bond that kind of came across on screen? I mean, when I casted them, um, it's harder these days with zero-budget projects because there's a lot of casting sites that you can't, you can't advertise volunteer projects anymore. They've made it really difficult for situations like this one. Um, so I actually went on directory and everyone in the area and in the age range, um, I contacted just firsthand. And um, I remember Henry Wilson when I first got an e a message back from him and he just put in this message. I don't know how, how he knew this would work with me, but he, was like, he mentioned that one of his favorite actors is Ethan Hawke, who is like my idol. And um, he mentioned Richard Linklater and a heavy influence of this film was Tape, um, so, which is a one location film set in a motel room with Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman and Robert Sean Leonard, which is amazing. And um, that really pushed forward to production of Cycles and gave me a lot of belief. And when Henry Wilson put that in this message, I was just like, oh, I really hope he's good. <laughs> 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 like, already in my head, I was like, I like this guy a lot. And we're on the same wavelength because there was this pitch pack that I put together, which had some concept um, art and poster and all of the material about the film. So we obviously twigged on that straight away. Um, yeah, and then for this, um, I sent him a message the same as well. And as soon as he sent me his audition, this. Um, there was something about you that I just, I saw younger brother in you. I never really knew what younger brother and older brother was or what they looked like or who they were. Um, but yeah, there was something about you, Fisk. And I don't know if it was your age and where you were in your life, but you just fit right into that gap. And then it was a case of just like callbacks and trying them against each other. Because even though, you know, you have your own beliefs as a casting director and as a director, it's still just to test people out. And um, we had so much great talent audition for this project. And um, I was really pl pleased to find Henry Fisk and Henry Wilson. And also pleased to see how well they fit together. I mean, like Henry Wilson mentioned earlier that he's moved from Australia. Um, so he has got a bit of an accent, but no one seems to notice it. And um, in their self-tapes, um, when me and Luciano were looking at them, 
we could we could sense it then and we could sense oh i don't know if these voices are going to click well together but let's try it and then yeah the minute you get them speaking at the same time or in the same room um they just they do sound like brothers i think it like the, the frequency of their voice they both got quite low boomy voices i think just fit in the same frequency so well that the sound just matches and then you forget all about accent and dialect and phrasing and all of that i mean yeah that that's what sold it for me really you know um these two that's people awesome. from different places coming together and just clicking and it, it was magical it really was yeah, that's pretty crazy. I have to say, like, I do agree with what you're saying. Like, I didn't know that Henry Wilson at all had even uh, like I didn't think about it while I was watching the movie. Like, I didn't hear an Australian accent at all. And there's a similar cadence to the way you guys speak. That's also different, but different enough to kind of have that brotherly kind of vibe. Similar enough, but different enough. So I'll go back to that other question I was going to ask you too about like, you know, did you guys have a lot of time together to kind of bond and kind of build that on stream chemistry, or was it kind of like? immediate when you guys met each other yeah no, i mean we uh so we didn't know each other uh any of us didn't know each other um prior to prior to starting the project um but i guess it just came through the amount of rehearsals that we had you know we spent so many time you know once a week on zoom then obviously i think you know increased to twice a week with meeting up in person as well we were spending such a, a you know consistent amount of time together um, during a period where obviously most of us hadn't seen anybody really. So it became quite easy to sort of, yeah, just, just get to know each other and, and everyone, you know, became quite close through that. So I think that hopefully carried through. Um, and yeah, the, the accents and stuff, I mean, we, we did make a, you know, just a very slight conscious effort to, you know, sort of bring them, bring them together. Um, just, just very slight, but again, most of it, you know, I think came through just, just, rehearsing so much and just getting a feel for for each other's tone and and the connection and whatnot so that you you can't really tell those things as much and we didn't want to worry too much about accents necessarily and have that as something that's on our minds and you know getting in the way of, of the emotional side of the performance so yeah no i guess it again it all came down to the rehearsals and the amount of time that we spent just preparing for the film definitely Definitely. And uh, Henry Fisk, and what about yourself? Did you guys actually like have any time where you went out for food together at any point, anything like that? Honestly, we didn't. Um, I think we spent a lot of time together in the rehearsals and over the Zoom sessions and stuff. Obviously, um, during rehearsals and when we were on set, we did, you know, we did have moments where we were together and we would just chat and get to know each other. And like, you know, we, we have had a lot of conversation where it's just been me and Henry um and we've got to know each other a bit better but prior to yeah. rehearsals and actually filming um we basically knew nothing about each other so i think um you know if anything that made it a better experience for me i think it's always quite unique to work with someone you know i mean you've got to get used to that haven't you if you if, if you right. become a professional actor then you're going to be walking onto set with people you've never met before and you're just going to have to get on with it and pretend like you know them um you know know them completely so i think if anything that that just adds to the experience for me and um i had a great time getting to know henry i had a great time getting to know oscar and everyone else on set and yeah it just it just added to the experience for me to be honest um but yeah we did we didn't know each other prior to prior to anything no well, that's cool because at the end of the day as i said you know and, and me and anthony i think have kind of echoed this throughout the stream is just you know the passion by all three of you and then obviously everyone who's behind the scenes as well is you can just tell it's like a love letter and it's a passion project and it's it speaks volumes in terms of the maturity as well that anthony touched on a little bit earlier and i just want to say to everyone who's watching right now that the link in the description box is there directly to take you to the amazon prime link to go buy and rent cycles for when it premieres on february 28th if anyone who hasn't checked it out it's highly worth watching and i think you're gonna have a good time you may even relate to it as well um but i just want to take the time just to thank anthony firstly for being my co-host today and I want to thank Oscar and both Henrys for joining me on the stream. And guys, just before we wrap this up, um, have you guys got any kind of like last final thoughts you want to say? Uh, yeah. Um, just thank you guys, Anthony and Mike, to be honest. Um, Mike, as we've mentioned before, you were the very first one to put up a review. And Anthony, you were one of the first people I ever spoke to about it and actually put me in touch with Mike. So, you know, I owe a lot uh, awesome. to you two for 
the networking I found between the YouTube movie reviewers. I mean, like you went did went to so much effort, time for this film and for us. And um, it's really, really appreciate appreciated. And you know, when people go and check out Cycles and people listening to this, um, yeah, we've mentioned it a lot, the passion and everything, but more than anything, it's like it just comes back to that same thing that we've all touched upon. You know, just have have a chat to someone, your friend, your family. I mean, there's loads of people in my life that I do talk to. But there's a lot of people I don't talk to enough as well, um, including right. my own siblings. So, you know, I hope this will this film has an impact on me. The further, the more I talk about it, and the further we go on the journey as well. And I think, you know, we're all meant to grow, but sometimes we have to force that growth if it doesn't feel natural. We're not used to talking as human beings. So hopefully this film, you know, can kickstart that and can change a couple of things here and there. But thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Hi, sure. welcome. You're welcome. And um, yeah, it's the same. And yeah, again, anyone who wants to check out Cycles, the link is in the description box below. Again, guys, thank you so much for your time. And to everyone who's watching live after the fact, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you all later.